hi all welcome back to my channel by spark pearls so in this video i will be discussing some theoretical questions for data engineers which is part two in the last video i've discussed some 10 questions which was asked in kpmg and this is the same you know extended video extended part of that video and also i want to thank you all you know for big for keep supporting me and you subscribe my channel now we are you know 1000 plus members in my channel so thank you thanks thank you for that so now let's start this video and for the first question what is difference between map and flat map so map and flat map generally used with, with rdd like in most of the operations you know in real time we are not applying it but it is one of the uh, good interview question like the interviewer tends to ask such questions right and this is one of the ask question as well so the map operation is a transformation that operates on a given function to each element on rdd so what it does basically it will apply the function on that element and return a output like it will be a single list or whatever format we want an output it will just you know map one to one and it will give the output right and flat map on the other end it flattens the rdd right result into a new rdd or data frame so it is like the uh, fault tolerance capability of uh, pi spark like everything whatever operations we do what a transformation we do it creates a new rdd new data frame in that way you know it keep a lineage and you know it is it maintains a fault tolerance capability of a spark then unlike map function applied in flat map can return multiple output elements in the form of an iterable for each output element resulting in one to many relationship between input and output elements okay so this is a definition of map and flat map you can uh, re go through this read this now let us go through the real life example right then this is the one of the rdd one two three four five we are creating this spark context and then parallelizing this list then map rdd is like lambda so the x such as x star two so this will be our output two four six eight ten now we are passing this value and we are expecting a list of you know one and a multiplied element but what we are getting is one two two four three six four eight five ten. so this is because we are using flat map so what is that it flattens the list it actually flattens the output of it right so this is the main difference between map and flat map so you can see the output and according to that you can you know uh, explain the interviewer uh, on your onwards so let us go to the second question what is catalyst optimizer so basically catalyst optimizer is a query optimization framework that is you know included in apache spark it improves uh, uh, performance of data frame operations uh, what i can say it improves the efficiency by you know uh, optimizing the execution plans different level of execution plans logical plan then a physical plan then optimized plan so different kind of techniques it use like filter piston projection pruning then join reordering so in detail i've explained here like see logical plan optimization the catalyst optimizer what it does here then physical plan generation it the once the logical plane is optimized the catalyst optimizer generates multiple physical execution plans from optimized logical plan this physical plans represent different ways to execute a data frame operations using spark execution engine so once this logical plan is generated right catalyzed optimizer by creating a logical plan so this is this is the basic step then main steps become here it starts from here so what catalyzed optimizer does so it creates a logical plan like many or uh, two three or like multiple physical execution plans right and out of this it does the cost based optimization so what it does it employs cost based optimization techniques to estimate the cost of executing each physical plan and selects the plan with the lowest estimated cost right so like uh, the cost here means like the you know, uh, time uh, then uh, processing power and everything it takes into consideration and you know finally it picks the plan which has have the lowest cost uh, this approach allows catalyst to make decision based on the characteristics of the data and the available resources so this is the best thing right it takes care of the resources it takes care of the you know, size everything it takes care of and then finally it uh, rule based optimization catalyzes a set of optimization rules to transform the logical and physical plans so uh, it covers a wide range of transformation like predicate push down then join reordering then constant folding and many other you know spark and build optimization techniques it does and finally select the plan and whatever you know dag is created uh, it works on our catalyzed optimizer 
then this is the third question of this playlist uh, this video and what are broadcast variables and accumulators in PySpark? so basically both broadcast variables and accumulators it is used to increase the optimization capabilities and efficiency of the PySpark code so the high level of broadcast variable is like suppose uh, there are some set of you know lookup tables or some set of variables some set of lists are there uh, which are with you and you want to you know use it uh, with uh, different tables or different data frames so what you will do you will generally uh, send it to every node right across all the nodes instead of sending separately you know with, with each task so we once sent it to all the nodes this is like broadcasting you know broadcasting like is sending it everywhere so this is the one thing this is this is what it is written here broadcast variables allows you to efficiently distribute large read only variables to all the worker these only variables or maybe some lookup tables right small lookup tables so this is particularly useful when you have large data sets or lookup tables that are needed to for tasks across all nodes instead of sending the variable separately with each task broadcast variable sent once right so this is uh, one of the way to broadcast the variable and we can access it's like broadcast underscore where dot value right you can access it like that and accumulators are something you know you can uh, if you work with python you can um, sync it as a counters right so accumulators are the variables that are only either true and associative or commutative operations like they are you know keep on adding right once we initialize the accumulator and then we want to maintain uh, for example how many times this uh, user defined function is used if you want to keep the count if you want to you know, display the account so like that we can you know uh, create a accumulator variable and we can just uh, increase that right accumulators are primarily used for debugging purposes of a monitoring or progress of computation right so this also we can uh, see this is one of the use for accumulator so this is like you know both uh, optimization techniques suppose uh, the udf uh, udfs are there right and we have uh, uh, keep an accumulator to you know see the count of how it is used and keep it so udfs are you know costly or costly thing and generally advice not to go with udfs right so we can keep an count of it and then we can you know optimize our code accordingly so this both are good techniques to you know optimize the code then this is one of the scenario based question that was asked okay in kpmg so and i think it was also asked in the light interview as well so like explain a scenario where you want to reduce the number of partition what we prefer repartition so generally what we think and our you know uh, uh, like whatever we if we go through some documents or we some read generally we see the collage is preferred to you know when we want to reduce the number of partition but there has there may be a situation you know where we want to prefer repartition instead of collage when you want to reduce or decrease the number of partition so this is a situation like suppose you have a PySpark data frame that is heavily skewed, right? Meaning that a few partition contains significantly more data than others. Significantly huge. One set of data is like huge and others are very few. So this is Q can lead us to straggler task in efficient resource utilization during computation because obviously like one uh, one task or one worker node will, will be utilized more and other worker node will be, you know, utilized less. So if you go through spark ui we can easily identify this is q we can see the average time then the max time and the minimum time so there will be a lot of difference between the min and the max time so in that way we can you know uh, uh, identify as q or also we if you want to go through then we can see the ui and we can you know just uh, short it according to the uh, task uses or the worker node uses so we can see that right then in this scenario collage, collage might not be useful because already the partition is screwed and if we collage is then what it will do it will uh, suppose it, it will mix the you know suppose if the skewed data is distributed to two partition it might make it into single partition so so it will it actually you know uh, worsen the situation so since the data is heavily skewed simply merging partition may not redistribute the data evenly and the skew may persist in the resulting partition instead you can use the partition to explicitly suffer and distribute so in this situation we should use repartition why because repartition will you know evenly distribute the data which helps to mitigate the effects of skew like somewhat it will you know give relief to the you know, nodes to the skew because it will repartition a data and it involves suffer right so all the data will be suffered. So in this situation, we might go with repartition to reduce the number of partition. Now, this is one of the question and also uh, one of the 
you know good thing in which spark has introduced like what is bucketing so bucketing is a technique used in apache spark to organize data into more manageable and evenly sized partition right on hash or one of the more columns we can give them for example here we have given the id column we can give more columns and this is number of buckets so it's particularly useful when you have large data sets and want to optimize certain types of operations such as joins this bucketed table joins you know very good thing actually so for example uh, i will just let you know uh suppose you have uh, two tables and two very big tables right and they have one primary key foreign key relationship something like that okay so what you need what you do and uh, both have both are having like suppose same primary key right so what you do um, you bucket the table with the same number of buckets and with the same uh, key column right and when then you do the join operation on that then what it will do it will it will have no shuffling at all right and when there will be no shuffle then obviously like uh, you know there will be a lot of advantages because no shuffle means uh, less resource utilization right and less you know task less overhead to the uh, resource manager everything will be you know time consumed will be less our query will be more optimized more efficient so this is a very good thing you can go through this documentation of bucketing and uh, yeah you can definitely try to you know incorporate in this in your code and in your project this will be really helpful so yeah, that's all for this video and uh, since we have completed 1000 subscribers and i want to make the announcement like that uh, what i will be doing i will be creating one end to end uh, already have created already have started working on it it is a databricks project so which will be including databricks and snowflake snowflake we can you know, then the, just, just i have included it as a data warehouse purpose we can go with databricks only uh, to create a you know, tables inside but i just you know to show the connection with this no snowflake how we can connect databricks with snowflake or right so i have used that so that project i will be making soon and keep subscribing and keep following thank you and you know, it's like it's, it feels so good to have 1000 plus subscribers yeah thank you bye bye